Mattress Warehouse knows that buying a mattress can be tough. With so many choices, where do you start? Introducing Bedmatch, a patented diagnostic system that determines your pressure points and recommends the mattresses that are best for your individual sleep needs. And it's found only at Mattress Warehouse. Come try Bedmatch at a mattress warehouse near you. Visit sleephappens.com for locations and get free next day delivery on select purchases. Mattress Warehouse. Sleephappens.com. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Is that Shakespeare? Nope. It's Geico. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Shakespeare from one of his unpublished works. Oh, it be not for awakening. Nay, give it thou the berries. For 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. No, it's from Geico, because they help save people money. Well, I hate to break it to you, but Geico got it from Shakespeare. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Bet fearlessly on your favorite sports with a risk-free first wager up to $600 at BetMGM. Just sign up using the bonus code VSIN600 and get in the game with the king of sportsbooks. Download the app or go to BetMGM.com and use promo code VSIN600 to make your first bet risk-free up to $600. New customer offer paid in free bets. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. 21 years of age or older to wager Colorado, Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, Washington, D.C., or West Virginia only excludes Michigan disassociated persons. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado, Nevada, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan. 1-800-GAMBLER in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. And 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. In Tennessee, call or text the red line at 800 887 9789 in Indiana. Call 1 800 9 with it. Promotional offer not available in Nevada as we are back here on the Lombardi line presented by Bet MGM. Stormy Bonantoni and Michael Lombardi with you. And just to wrap up a little conversation we were having with Vinny Maiulo before the break, talking about the Dolphins next season and what their potential quarterback situation could be, um, the unsuredness at times when it comes to Tua Tonga Vailoa, and then the potential of Deshaun Watson being out there. And there are reports, Michael, that say the Dolphins would consider trading for Deshaun if his legal issues are resolved. What's your kind of feel for that situation right now? Well, I, I think what the Dolphins did this offseason, and, and I don't know if I disagree with it, but I think the Dolphins are concerned. How wouldn't you be concerned? I mean, did you not just watch Herbert play last year? You took Tua before Herbert. Mm-hmm. And let's be real clear here. The Chargers made it uh, abundantly clear that they were going to take whatever quarterback was left. They had them both graded the same. So I'm not indicting Miami. But what's happened is there's a huge gap between the two players. Like, you can't watch Herbert play pro football and Tua play pro football and think that one guy went before the other. You just can't do that. You're lying to yourself if you do. So you're Miami. You've watched Herbert play. You've seen what you've missed. I mean, put Herbert on Miami's team, and we might be talking about them as as a Kansas City chief competitor, right? We're not. So Miami realizes where they are. They don't want to run it out, and I think they're right in the sense, let's give Tua a little bit more time to see. We know he's never going to be a top five quarterback in the league. He's probably never going to be that. But could he be good enough that we could build a team around? I think they deserve the right to find that out, and I think they're going to use the first eight to ten games of the season. That's why they passed on the quarterbacks in this past draft. Now, I think that does it. there's not a long clock for that to run. As the uh, as they indicated, the owner has made it very clear. He expects to go to the Super Bowl shortly. And by shortly, I think that's going to be the that that target that bullseye is on to his back. And with Deshaun Watson potentially out there, whatever happens with his cases, whatever happens with that situation, whatever happens with other quarterbacks in the National Football League, the Dolphins have to be really ready to pounce on it because they have no answers. There's a lot of people in that building that know they made a mistake and they know it, but they want to give it a little bit more time. The over-under on their wins total for the Dolphins this year, by the way, nine and a half. And what is just your pulse in general on the Deshaun Watson situation, the state of Deshaun Watson? Because last I saw, there was no movement toward a potential settlement. Everything had been in limbo. And, I mean, players are reporting to camp. Like, it's, it's the time to get things going. But I haven't really heard any updates on any of that situation. 
there's been no updates. His agent's on his honeymoon in Greece. And, you know, I mean, the agent for the, the all the women, the 22, the attorney for them, you know, there's been no resolution. And we've been told, uh, the last that I've heard is we've been told it probably won't get resolved in 2022 until, until 2022. Now, I've said this repeatedly. The longer he does not come to training camp, the longer he stays protesting. What? I don't know. What is he protesting? We don't know. He signed that contract extension 11 months ago, and he was happy as hell to do it. In that 11 months, his behavior, according to some, hasn't been very good. You know, the, the Texans' behavior, documented, hasn't been very good. So we understand the dynamic that's going on here. But for me, you know, he is clearly out there. You know, and but the longer he stays out there, he does the NFL and the Texans a favor by not having to make a decision. Mm-hmm. Lots of question marks, I feel like, surrounding that situation. And it's really just a wait and see kind of thing, though. That's what's so frustrating. And I know we have that with a lot of other teams right now in terms of the Aaron Rodgers situation, which we'll talk about in just a little bit as well. Um, the Rams, what they'll do without Cam Akers. But a, a lot of question marks that just can only be figured out in time. Welcome you back. Those of you just joining us here on the Lombardi line. I'm Stormy Bonantoni alongside Michael Lombardi today. Patrick Maher getting some time off as he very well deserves uh, in a long year. And I I do kind of want to switch gears here now. Maybe let's go to the Cowboys if you don't mind, because Mike McCarthy said yesterday that Dak Prescott would, should be a full participant uh, with training camp starting today, but it's still a projection and we'll see how it goes. I don't know how confident I feel about we'll see how it goes. Well, I, I mean, there's no way he doesn't know how it's going to go. Okay. <laughs> like, unless he was unless he was on vacation in Cabo when they had OTAs and mini camp. I mean, he's watched them work out. Yeah, that's what you I know, thought. He's only his best player. He's his, he's his highest paid player. <laughs> he's been down there. Now, maybe he doesn't want to let – maybe he doesn't want to take him off the PUP. Maybe they want to bring him back slowly, you know, give Cooper Rush more reps, give, you know, Don Finucci, Ben Danucci, we call him Don Finucci, <laughs> give him more reps and – Garrett Gilbert, their third string quarterback, more reps. I don't know. I mean, he's watched them play, right? There's been no urgency for them to improve their backup quarterback. So for me, this is really just a stall technique. I mean, he's going to be there. It's just a question of when they feel comfortable letting him go. And I mean, look how different that team was with him on the field versus when he wasn't. What are your expectations for Dallas this coming season? You know, for me, I I always think it's a little bit challenging uh, when you go on hard knocks. How is that going to respond, right? How are you going to play? You know, the last time they were on hard knocks, the first time they were on hard knocks, Dave Campbell was a coach. And what happens to you when you're on hard knocks is America gets a peek inside your building. And when you don't look very effective as a coach or a leader, America sees it and your timetable runs out. I mean, I can still remember watching Herm Edwards, who's a wonderful man, you know, sitting there pondering whether he's going to start Brody Croyle at quarterback or Damon Hurd. There's like, there's no decision. And so this puts all the emphasis on what's Mike McCarthy's role. And is he just going to be a guy that says yes to Jerry Jones? And the players watch this show and they see it and they react to it. Like I said earlier in the program, Jerry's whole press conference, his monologue on his desires and what he wants, he really doesn't understand why he won. He really doesn't. He understood, he didn't understand that Jimmy built the culture, that Jimmy built a team around team first, that he was the guy that was driving the team, that the owner can't do that. The owner can't do that. It's hard for the owner to do it. He doesn't have enough expertise in the football or coaching the team on a daily basis. He's a great salesman. But this is why, this is why this team is, is really, this is why this team is only eight games over 500 this year in this decade. Plus 115, their odds to potentially win the conference this year. And yeah, that's a tough spot for Mike McCarthy. It's a tough spot for that entire team because the hard knocks curse is a real thing. And it's it's weird to say that, um, but it is because of that peek into the lives of these players and these characters. And there is more. It's already the NFL. We, we know that these people are talked about and critiqued on a regular basis. But when you do get that inside look and you're seeing things that on a normal day to day basis you would never see, it can change the light. Right, and there's no spin, right? Hugh Jackson was the greatest spin meister of all, right? He could convince anybody of anything. And yet when we got a peek inside his staff meetings, when people actually watched him coach, when people actually watched his behavior, nobody it wasn't believable. It wasn't believable. 
Like it was, he couldn't spin it another way. And, you know, he, in one meeting, he's saying he's in control of everything. It's the buck stops with him. And then he's got his other people in the media saying, well, it wasn't his decision to draft this guy. And it wasn't his decision to trade away from Deshaun Watson. Like, you know, you can't have it both ways. And this is what happens when you let those cameras come in your building. So I think it's going to be a real tough spot for Mike McCarthy. And more than just the imagery and the effect of hard knocks is how good are they on defense? Have they really improved on defense? Are they going to be good enough in the defensive front to run Dan Quinn's scheme? Are they going to be fast enough? You know, are they going to be Makai Parsons? Can he be Bobby Wagner? Mm -hmm. These are all questions, and this is what we're going to be able to watch in the preseason. We could see the speed. You know, the preseasons, let's forget about the wins and losses. Let's just evaluate sections, and we'll see where they are. And this is hope season right now, so everybody's hoping that they're going to come out and be the team that they expect them to be. Um, the big news coming out of yesterday, since we haven't got a chance to talk to you about it, Cam Akers, we find out he has a ruptured Achilles. He's going to be out for the entire season, and it was just a, you know one of those workouts away from the team. Um, how big of an impact does that make given that, you know, you see Brown, he's been shipped off to Miami. So they're without their primary back. They're without their power back. Um, and now they just got to kind of reevaluate from there. And it seems like Sean McVay isn't really interested in testing the free agent waters. Well, I mean, look, where's he going to go for it? You know, Todd Gurley was washed up in his last year at the Rams. They had to release him even though they owed him. He's going to say you're going to keep paying God, him God, alive. Sums of guarantee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, so the best thing he can do is really just see what Daryl Henderson can do. I mean, this is a concern for if you're a Ram backer on the over number. This is a concern if you're a Ram backer on the futures bet. Because if the Rams lose players – any one of their starting 22 that they lose, their depth of their team is not very good. It's just not. And it's not a knock on Les Snead, their general manager, or the coaching staff, or anybody. It's just the reality of how they've chosen to build this team. They've given all the money to Stafford. They've given all the money to Aaron Donald. They've given all the money to certain players, to, to uh, Jalen Ramsey. They've given the money to those guys. And so there's really not a lot of money left. For other players. And so it, they're going to have to count on, you know, the backup offensive tackles if, if something happens to Andre Whitworth. I mean, Note Boom's going to have to play. And, you know, they're going to have to count on Daryl Henderson because Cam Akers looked like he could be a really good player. But now all of a sudden he's not going to be there anymore. So this is what worries you. It's what worries you about the 49ers. It what worries you about the Rams. Do they have enough depth on their team? to handle the marathon. The NFL is a marathon. It's a marathon, and we as betters have to understand that. Yeah, and I know they do have some other couple young guys that are intriguing to Sean McVay below Henderson, Jake Funk, uh, Xavier Jones, I believe, is another one. Um, and so now is the time in preseason and training camp where he can kind of get a feel for his team before having to see if you do ultimately want to reach out and see if you can get another one of those guys. But you're right, there's not a whole lot really on the market that would make you particularly interested in. But the, the Rams, just as a team this year, I'm super interested to see what's going to happen with with Matt Stafford like is he gonna be the guy that we've all anticipated he could have been had he had a better surrounding cast like the Lions just it was a brutal situation for him yeah I think the best play to sum up why they made the the, the change is the play in the Super Bowl when Jared Goff's standing there and he's got zero blitz coming right at him and he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage and he sees the free blitzer coming right at him, and he throws the ball maybe a half a tenth too early. And Stephon Gilmore picks it up. Stafford would have held on to that ball, and he would have thrown it, and he would have thrown it, and as soon as he let it go, he would have gotten clobbered. And it would have been a touchdown because that's the way Stafford plays. And I think that play really sums up why their divorce happened between Jared Goff and Sean McVay because no one, no one was a stronger Jared Goff fan than Sean McVay. When I lived in Los mm -hmm. Angeles and I would talk to a bunch of the Rams coaches, I was constantly on, you, can you really win with this guy? Is he good enough? I mean, does he play fast enough? Does he process it? Does he, if it's not play action, can he make the throw? And oh, the, he's great. Every, every, there was nobody. I was, I was really, I was the, the ugly duckling in the room. <laughs> well, and so yeah. they changed it. They, it's flipped. And now Stafford comes in and he gives them more toughness at the position. 
He also gives them a drop back passer, somebody who can run a drop back pass game and read it quickly. That's something Goff didn't do. The reason Goff was so good was because McVay was running play action passes and he said, you either throw the ball here or you throw it there. Easy. But when you don't run play action and now you have to read it out, middle of the field open, middle of the field closed, they got the high safety, they're playing robber coverage. Okay, I got to throw it here. Boom, bang it. It's hard. And Stafford can do that. I love that you talk about toughness because Matt Stafford for me is certainly one of those guys that you think like how many injuries has he played through throughout the course of a season? And and I know you haven't felt that way about Jared Goff, that you did not think that he had that toughness factor. So for Sean McVay, that's just got to be like everything you could want in an athlete that's willing to put his body on the line for you every play. No doubt. And, you know, you also feel good about going into cold weather with Matthew Stafford. Yeah. I mean, look, when Goff got to go play in cold weather, I mean, you know, he wanted a table for two in front of the heater. <laughs> you know, it was he was he would comp the Mater D to make sure he was there. I mean, it was seriously he was not going to get cold. And so, uh, you know, their reality is, is, is they got more toughness. They got a better player, even though the Rams who have done this time and time again, whether they did it with Gurley is they sign these guys to mega contracts and then they get rid of them. They just waste money left and right. And they must be going to make a lot of money in their new stadium because, you know, you pay Goff all that money. Why would you make Goff one of the highest paid quarterbacks in football when they did it, $33 million a year? And they, tra- they were able to dump them all and they got out of it. They've done a good job of escaping. They're really the Harry Houdinis of the NFL <laughs> from their bad contracts. Yeah, good for them. And they're definitely uh, going to try to do everything in their power to take over that NFC West, a very tough division, no question. Call it the NFC best every now and then for a reason. Their odds, by the way, to win the Super Bowl this year, 12 to 1. Uh, keeping in the trend of quarterbacks. The biggest question mark mm-hmm. of this entire offseason has all surrounded around Aaron Rodgers. And I know you have talked a number of times about how you believe that he's going to be coming back. And if you look at those odds for where he's going to take his first snap this year, it was like minus 400 or something around that level for him to be ultimately doing it in Green Bay. But now we see this report come out from Adam Schefter earlier this week that he was offered this extension and we already knew that he was offered to become the highest paid player in the NFL but but now you see that he was getting offered the term it wasn't about that it wasn't about money it's really just an internal issue of what he feels is respect is what it seems like and so I don't know what your feeling is now as this continues to play out and his camps are finally here right around the corner when does he get there well, I think it's all. Everything's been calculated by what they've done. I mean, look, there's a is there is there a mystery to why right before the draft the Schefter the Schefter broke the story? He is did there it, a mystery he, he, that? Yeah, he weeks, like did it right right then. Like he had known the information, right. and that's when he. It's all. It. This is all. This is all tactical. This is being orchestrated by Dave Dunn, the agent. This is all being orchestrated by the agent. And so, you know, and then as it is shocking that 10 days before camp opens up, it's released that he turned down the shoot, even though Bob McGinn, a writer for The Athletic, reported it two months ago, but it never got enough traction. Now with Schefter's 7 million Twitter followers, it gets traction. But that was exactly why they planted it with Schefter. That's why it's there, is to give it. So now all of a sudden, you're sending a message to the Packer fans you're sending a message to the Packer front office that it's, it's, it's not about money. It's always about money. And I don't know where they gain respect. Like, you, you played all last year. What happened to the respect? Like, if you were disrespected when you were playing the conference championship game, why did you play? Yeah. Why yeah. did you play? So I, I think it's a lot about PR. I think it's a lot about agent manipulation. And if you fall into that trap, which the books have it, the books are saying, look, we're not buying it. We know the Packers have the leverage, and we know the Packers, unless they just decide to throw their hands up and give up the season, they're going to just keep them. And if he wants to retire, they're going to call his bluff. Let's just let's play this through. If you're Mark Murphy, I'll call your bluff, Aaron. Don't come to camp. Don't show up. You're not hurting me because mm-hmm. I'm going to write you a letter saying either retire or or I'm going to put you on the reserve did not report list. At that point, it triggers clauses in your contract that get away from guarantees. It also triggers where you have to start paying me back. Now, you've just done me one favor, number one. All right? Now, you don't want to come for the regular season? No problem. Put you on reserve. Reserve did not report for the season. Okay? There it goes. Now you start owing me signing bonus money back. Here's where you deposit those checks. Like, 
where am I? Where I'm not. I'm the worst place that I was. If I trade you, all those draft picks that I get aren't going to help my team this year anyway. Yeah. Well, what it, am I going to get for you? I <laughs> say I get. I'm going to get three number ones from Denver. I'm going to get three number ones from Denver in January anyway. So why would I do it now? Well, and why to, would I do it now? And to me, I, I get totally that this is. It all just feels like a control thing. And Aaron Rodgers lost control when they traded up, got Jordan Love, and he has nothing against Jordan Love, but that he wasn't in on the know about it. Like, he feels disrespected. He didn't have control. The Packers obviously do, and they know that they do. But for me, Aaron Rodgers, we know that he's a competitive guy. He's a competitor, too. Like, if he's the reigning MVP, just came off another conference championship appearance, he wants to play. It, that's. Am I wrong in that? Like, I feel right. like he's one of those guys. If he And if he doesn't want to play, then he's going to retire. I mean, it's really not a complicated thing. But go back to it. If you're Mark Murphy, if I trade you in August, none of those picks that I get in August do me any good. I've lost yeah. the season anyway. So why not? Why don't I wait until I get to the offseason? Why would I not show a position of strength? They're trying to reclaim strength by leaking stories. This is how they gain it. This is, this is agent manipulation started by one of the best in the business, Lee Steinberg. And David <laughs> Dunn worked for Lee Steinberg. This is one of the best. This is how they do it. They control the narrative. It's really what the CIA called the Mockingbird Experiment. It's how you control different narratives in different countries through the newspaper. It's what's going on here? And so you do that. And, you know, oh, Aaron got turned down the huge kind. He doesn't want to play. Get everybody talking like that. You know, you know okay, I trade you. Where am I, what am I getting? I get two number ones in the 22 draft and the 23 draft. They don't do me any good today. I'm going to lose this year anyway. Division odds for the Green Bay Packers, minus 120 to win. And you see that win total there off the board as of right now. And it's interesting. We talked to pro football focuses, Eric Eager, yesterday. Um, and he said with Aaron Rodgers and without in their analytics with him, they had three games on versus if they were starting Jordan Love in their opinions, in their analytics. So thought that was a little bit of an interesting argument as well. It'll just They're not a nine win they're not a nine win team. All due respect yeah. to him. They're not a nine win team with Jordan Love. I can tell you that right now. They're not a ten win team with Jordan Love. I yeah. can tell you that right now. I'll take that to the bank. Yep, when I am with you there, and that's what they said. They're, you know, obviously that number goes down. We'll just see how far down it ultimately would go if they did not have Aaron Rodgers. Hopefully they do. That's the plan. And we'll be right back on the Lombardi line on Visa and the Sports Betting Network. It's crazy how much we have to pay for outdated, impersonal health care, and even crazier that we all just accept it. It's time to face facts. Health care is backwards. Luckily, there's Forward, a new approach to primary care that's surprisingly personal and refreshingly straightforward. Forward never makes you feel like just another patient. Backed by top-rated doctors and the latest tech, Forward gives you access to personalized care whenever you need it. Using in-depth genetic analysis and real-time blood work, Forward's top-rated doctors provide you with in-depth insights to better understand your genetics, mental, and physical health. They then create custom, easy-to-understand plans to help guide you to achieving long-term health. With Forward, you get unlimited in-person visits with your doctor and access to care anytime via the Forward app, all for one flat monthly fee. It's time to stop accepting backwards health care and start moving your health forward. Visit GoForward.com today to learn more. That's GoForward.com. Support for this podcast comes from CLR Clear. If stubborn shower mold has you miffed, or you're hard-pressed to get rid of hard water buildup, it's high time you kick your so-so cleaning products to the curb. It's time to fight the clean fight with the CLR Clear family of products. CLR Clear knows there's all kinds of dirty which is why they offer products to help you take on messes all around your home. So go on and fight off that countertop crud. Square up with those carpet stains. Go crazy on your garbage disposal gunk. CLR Clear has formulas to help you get the dirty deeds done. Plus, many of their products meet the EPA's safer product standard. So while tough on messes, it's still the safer choice for your family and the environment. Show dirt and grime around your home who's boss with CLR Clear and fight the clean fight. 
Learn more about the entire product lineup by going to clrbrands.com. Welcome back into the Lombardi line presented as always by bet MGM. I'm stormy Bonantoni alongside Michael Lombardi today talking a lot of NFL headlines right now. One of which as the Pittsburgh Steelers showed up to camp yesterday uh, was big Ben. Ben Roethlisberger is apparently lean and mean shed a few pounds. I don't know about you. When I looked at the photo that I saw of him walking that everybody has been going around like to me, he, he looked the same, but apparently he's on a stricter diet than Tom Brady. I don't buy that, but (laughs) good for him. I mean, he needs to get back. I mean, he needs to stay healthy. I think the big thing with Big Ben and the big thing with the Pittsburgh offense is not going to be Ben. It's going to be can this offensive line protect and give Ben enough confidence to hold the ball longer. You know, Stormy, when you watch the games and Pittsburgh down the stretch, the commentators couldn't wait to talk about. And they did it with with a, a Dick Vitale enthusiasm that how quickly he gets rid of the ball and you know, the next gen stats, he gets rid of it in one point. Well, the receivers weren't even ready to catch the damn thing by the time he got rid of it and his yards per attempt where it was going down at an alarming rate. And I harp on yards per attempt all the time because yards per attempt is an indication of a quarterback's eye level. And what does that mean? That means the quarterback is looking down the field, right? So when you're worried about the rush, You're looking at what the left guard does. You're looking at what the right tackle does. You're looking around. Your eye level's down here. So as soon as you feel somebody coming, you throw the ball quickly. That's why two has a 4.65 on third down. He feels the pressure. Mm -hmm. He gets rid of the ball so he doesn't get sacked. And ultimately, he converts 31% of his third downs. Not good. Herbert stands there, eye level way down the field, throwing it down, 14 touchdowns, six interceptions, 46% on third down. That's the difference. And Ben... Last year, wanted nothing to do with getting hit. He wanted to be in shotgun all the time. He wanted to get the ball out of his hand quickly. And if that doesn't change, I don't care what his body looks like because he's not going to be able to be able to win doing that. Well, then it's not good when you hear the Steelers offensive coordinator, Matt Canada, saying that he expects growing pains for this offensive line, like that he expects that it's going to be a little bit of a challenge off the hop for them. Yeah, well, I mean, look, Matt Canada's got to sell Ben Roethlisberger on getting under center. Because if you put a bad offensive line and the quarterback and shotgun, this is not, they're not counting the five Mississippi on the other side. So just because he's in shotgun doesn't do him any good, right? You still have the receivers have to get in the route. The receivers aren't in shotgun. The receivers aren't five yards into the route when the ball gets snapped. They still have to run the same distance the defensive line has to get up the field. So even though the quarterback's back there, he can't get rid of the ball. Now, he's just set and ready to throw it quicker because he doesn't have to set up. But the reality here is, is will they be able to protect when they're in shotgun? Can they leave them? Eric Ebron doesn't block anybody. Now, they drafted a kid from Penn State, Frymouth. They're going to see if he can hold up. But they don't, they, they don't protect the quarterback with the edges because they don't have a tight end that can block. But can they? And these tackles are going to be in real trouble. And Ben's going to get hit quite a bit. So what does that mean? That means we got to play under center. We got to give the ball to Nigel Harris a little bit. We got to have short passes on first down. We got to stay out of the third and long, and we got to help the offensive line. It doesn't mean we run it every play. It just means we throw it on plays where they least expect it. And I think that's what they have to do. That's the challenge for Matt Canada. Yeah, and particularly, you know, you look at Big Ben. Obviously, he's not getting any younger. Uh, 39 years old right now. The health is critically important. Um, their odds to win the AFC North plus 400. That win total eight and a half. What do you think about that number for them? Obviously, they won their first 11 games last season to get things going. What are your thoughts? I'm a big believer in the under there. I really am. I, I think the under is strongly in play for the Pittsburgh. I think they play, you know, they face the toughest schedule according to strength of some strength of schedule calculation based on regular season wins, right? They face the tough schedule. Ben's another year older, you know, and Ben didn't play down the stretch. So they lost a nine-time Pro Bowl setter in pound, and he'll be replaced by a pure rookie and Kendrick. You're going to have a running back. 
you know, stay healthy tomorrow. Rookie quarterbacks tend to do that. I think they're going to take a turn. You know, they plus nine in the turnover takeaway. Seven and two in one game score last year. Seven and two and plus nine. Can they duplicate that again? I don't think so. Yeah, they had an incredible start. They Their stat lines in a number of categories were incredible, and it's unfortunate for a team like that when you do have the start that you do to have things ultimately fall off on the back end of the season because that was a team that had so much potential. Yeah. I mean, look, they they dwindled as they went down the road. I mean, that's the reality. As more ga- as they got older, they didn't they didn't they didn't play well. Plenty more coming up here on the Lombardi line and Josh Applebaum will join us in a little bit. See where the steam's Uh-oh. going. Football betting guides are coming soon, and there's no better way to prepare for the college and pro football seasons. Our experts provide profiles of every team with advanced stats and power ratings, plus best bets on season win totals, division finishes, and player awards. Each guide is only 20 bucks, and discounts are available when you buy both. Now is the time to reserve your copy. Get in there or sign up for VSIN All Access and get everything we offer for the entire football season. You can sign up now at VSIN.com slash subscribe. Back here on a Thursday on the Lombardi line, Stormy Bonantoni and Michael Lombardi with you. And so happy to be joined now by Josh Applebaum, as always. You can give him a follow at Josh underscore insights, VSIN sports betting reporter. And I hear you have a nice update for us in uh, Massachusetts sports betting. What's the news? Stormy Michael, it's great to be with you. And I have a huge update here. So, guys, I'm on pins and needles over here outside of Boston because today is a huge day for uh, the community and the citizens of Massachusetts. You know, we've gone through uh, seeing every other state around us legalize betting. You know, Stormy Michael, you go north to New Hampshire, they're legal. Connecticut's about to legalize in September. You go west uh, to New York, they're about to have mobile. Uh, Rhode Island, below us uh, to, you know, to the east is also legal. But guess what, guys? The the wait may be over. I don't want to jinx it too much. I, I'm knocking on every piece of wood I can find. But there's a huge vote today in the Massachusetts House of Representatives. Uh, they're debating, and they are going to vote on the first step to legalize sports betting in Massachusetts. So this has been a long time coming, obviously, since 2018. We're up to 30 legalized states overall. And Massachusetts has really taken a very slow and deliberate approach. They wanted to study other states. They wanted to make sure they get it right. Uh, then COVID hit. It got delayed once again. But today, uh, you know, p- coming into today, there are about 22 different sports betting bills. Over the past couple of weeks, they've narrowed it down to one bill. So they're going to debate 28 amendments today, guys. And reading the tea leaves, it sounds like this may happen uh, finally. So I don't want to get uh, too excited because we have had situations where it sounds like it's going to happen, then it doesn't. But they're going to debate these 28 amendments today. If it passes, Michael could bring in about $70 million in tax revenue. Uh, and it sounds like you'd have to be 21 or older, just like other states. Uh, you can't use a credit card. The big thing is you can bet on college sports. You know, a lot of these early versions, you wouldn't, you couldn't bet on college sports. That's been added. You have all the major sports teams in Massachusetts behind this, the Red Sox, Bruins, Patriots, Celtics. Uh, there's Boston Encore right next to Boston, which is also a big proponent. You have Plain Ridge Park Casino. Uh, you have all these, it also uh, bet, M- uh, bet MGM in Springfield as well. So guys, I- I'm excited. I think this might finally be it. Fingers crossed. And my question to you is, Michael Stormy, if this happens, will you meet me at Fenway Park to bet on sports a year from now? I hope you do. <laughs> Count me in. I, I would. I love Fenway. I love Fenway. Jo- Josh, let me ask you. So if this bill passes, will they be brick-and-mortar buildings that are sports books, or do they have to be in the casino? Tell me how this would work. Yeah, so this w- sounds like, in a way, we waited so long, but they've kind of ironed out a lot of these details. So you'll have brick-and-mortar. The other big thing is they're going to allow – uh, if this passes, betting in stadium. So Gillette Stadium for Patriots games, Fenway, the Garden for the Bruins and the Celtics. Uh, another thing is mobile. It's untethered. This is a huge thing because a lot of these different states, when they legalize, you have to show up in person uh, to register. If this passes, you could just sign up. As long as you're geolocated in Massachusetts, you could sign up and start betting on sports. The other thing is a lot of these, like, you know, towny pubs and dive bars and uh, different spots, restaurants. 
a lot of people play Keno around here. I don't know if that's big uh, in Jersey or in Nevada, but a lot of these um, local uh, businesses are saying, hey, let us have a license to bet on sports, put in a kiosk uh, for different online operators. So that would be available as well. So fingers crossed, guys. I'm excited, and I'll be I'll be a nerd watching this live stream from the Massachusetts house, house today, hoping this thing passes. That's awesome. You got to do it. And I mean, especially like neighboring Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Hampshire, New York, those are all states that have had it, and Massachusetts has just been the odd man out. So a really, really exciting time. You've got to keep us updated. Get this in the text string <laughs> later once we're off of the air. Um, I do know just in terms of uh, sports that are going on right now with the Olympics getting underway, you had a, a few basketball plays in terms of the, the international field that you wanted to talk about. Yeah, so Stormy, you know, NBA is obviously over. Congrats to Giannis and the Bucks for their first championship in 50 years. But, Michael, uh, the NBA draft is coming up. We've hit on the draft a bit. We'll keep hammering yeah. that until the 29th. But I got a question to you, Michael, about Team USA basketball. Uh, because what we saw with Team USA is they open as a minus 1,000 favorite to win the gold here, and they've stumbled. You know, they lost to Nigeria. They lost yeah. to Australia. Their odds have tanked. Team USA is down to minus 350 to win the gold here. So I think on the one hand, you say they don't look very good. How can I bet on them? But Michael, as a contrarian, I'm thinking, hey, let's buy low on Team USA <laughs> right now. They're minus 350, and they're going to get some additions. They're going to get Devin Booker, Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton. Uh, so, Michael, are you bullish on Team USA? And also, you know, Belichick always, it sounds like, you know, if you lose, give them some humble pie. Did they learn from those losses? Is it, is it good to get those out of the way and maybe benefit them later? What's your take on Team USA, Michael? Well, I mean, they still have Kevin Garnett, right? He's still playing on that team. They still have some of the best players, so I think it's hard for you not to. I think it's more about some of the other teams that they feel like are really good. Uh, Croatia being one of them. You know, even France, I believe, is one of the teams. I don't know who the second betting favorite is, Josh, but I think some of those teams are have got a lot of NBA stars and they're playing really well. So, But I, I, I think you're right. Anytime you get a, a minus 1,000 out of 350, it may be something to look at. I'm right there with you, Michael. And yeah, a couple teams also with some liability from our friend, uh, our friend John Ewing at BetMGM. Believe it or not, Slovenia and uh, and as well as Australia have taken yeah, some action yeah. here. They got a, a low ticket count, but more money. So maybe those are teams to to buy low on. But to me, guys, you know the oddsmakers are saying minus a thousand to start Team USA. You know this isn't the '92 dream team, but still, uh, you got a lot of great players. You're getting in some reinforcements. Also, how weird is it going to be with Booker? hanging out with Holiday and Middleton, uh, taking taking the plane to Tokyo. <laughs> that's what I wanted to ask you about, honestly, because I, that's all I could think about whenever I think about USA basketball in the Olympics right now is that you've got a couple of guys hanging their heads, brutal, and now you've got to be teammates, buddies, bonding, try, trying to get a championship of your own together with these guys that you've just been programmed to hate for the last however many weeks. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely a weird situation. Uh, Michael, what do you think about this? Well, is it just, hey, we're Americans, put it behind us, or how weird will that, that, will that plane yeah. ride be? I don't think it's going to be weird at all, really. I think it's just, hey, look, you were better than we were. I mean, we had we had you two love and you won four straight. And, you know, your inner competitiveness wants to take over, but I don't think it's anything personal. You know, this is business, not personal. So I think that'll be an enjoyable playing ride. Plus, you know, you got to go over there and, you know, and you got to go play and their teammates. So I don't think it'll be just like I don't think DeChambeau and Brooke Kefka have any problem working together on that thing. Man, you're a bigger man than I. I got to tell you, I feel like I'd be pretty bitter. No, like, am I wrong, Josh? Wouldn't you be a little, like, bitter? You're at Italian, least to Stormy. Start? I, I mean, bitter runs in the – I know, we're Italian. Bitter runs in it. But I think you got to be professional about it. I understand. You know, we hold grudges. I get it. All right, all right. I'm with you. Fair. Thank you. Coach Popovich it. has his work cut out for him. But a Team USA, <laughs> minus 350, good buy low spot, I think. Love that. Love that. Love that. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that as the time comes. And Josh Applebaum, don't go anywhere. You got to stick around and give us some of your MLB plays for the day. Also, potential NFL Coach of the Year play. And I just love saying the word contrarian. So whatever you can give me, <laughs> hope we'll get that on the other end of this break. The Jaguar F-Type doesn't just go from point A to point B. It takes you places few will ever experience. Climb into the driver-focused cockpit. Start the engine with a simple push of a button. And suddenly it's just you and 575 horsepower. 
eight gears shifting. The agile suspension hugging the road. The rest of the world just melting away till everything else becomes a blur. And while the engine is a symphony in itself, feel free to lose yourself in your own soundtrack with the available 825 watt Meridian surround sound system. The Jaguar F-Type, an exhilarating combination of design and performance, makes it like no other sports car in the world. Learn more at JaguarUSA.com. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Is that Shakespeare? Nope, it's Geico. Uh, yeah, 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 that's Shakespeare from one of his unpublished works. Oh, it be not for awakening. Nay, give it thou the berries. For 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. No, it's from Geico, because they help save people money. Well, I hate to break it to you, but Geico got it from Shakespeare. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. on your favorite sports with a risk-free first wager up to $600 at BetMGM. Just sign up using bonus code VSIN600 and get in the game with the king of sportsbooks. Download the app or go to BetMGM.com and use promo code VSIN600 to make your first bet risk-free up to $600. New customer offer paid in free bets. Visit BetMGM.com for those terms and conditions. 21 years of age or older to wager. Colorado, Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, Washington, D.C., or West Virginia only. Includes Michigan disassociated persons. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado, Nevada, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan. 1-800-GAMBLER in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. And 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. In Tennessee, you can call or text the red line at 800-889-9789. Indiana, call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Promotional offer not available in Nevada. As we welcome you back into the Lombardi line, wrapping things up here. Here at our VEASAN studio at the South Point, Michael Lombardi and Josh Applebaum here, uh, host of our Market Insights podcast here at VEASAN. And we just talked uh, about the update in Massachusetts, which is great, waiting for the House of Representatives decision on whether or not that'll be updated. So really exciting stuff for you. But also, I know we've got some futures and some plays in action for today. So let's get into it, starting with NFL Coach of the Year, Josh. Uh, Kevin Stefanski is the leader in the clubhouse at 12 to one odds right now. What are you liking on that bar board? Yeah. So I think stormy this, this prop bet is kind of intriguing because I think a lot of times recreational betters, they'll go toward MVP. They'll go to win totals. They'll go to, you know, defensive player of the year, offensive player of the year, rookie of the year, these ones. But I feel like coach of the year kind of gets overlooked. And I really think that could be a mistake because if you look at these payouts guys, you know, when we're looking at MVP, it's like Mahomes plus 500, all these other ones, the favorite is like plus 500 plus 600 plus 400 around there. These coach of the years, if you can get these right, you can make a ton of money because uh, really, you know, your, your favorites here are 12 to one, you know, 14 to one. So it provides a lot of opportunity here. So Michael, I'll throw it to you. You know, Stefanski is the, uh, you know, defending uh, coach of the year. He's 12 to one. You can always uh, respect McVay, Shanahan, Andy Reid, all around 14, 16 to one. You know, a couple ones that caught my eye, uh, Robert Salah, you know, around what, 18 to one here is taking over with the Jets. Uh, Frank Reich plus 1800, uh, you know, taking over with the, with the Colts here. And then also uh, Fangio plus 2,500 with, uh, with Denver. Michael, I know you're high in the Broncos this year. And then what about our guy, Bill Belichick? I feel like every year he's the favorite to win this award. He's down to plus 2000 here kind of being overlooked. So Michael, which coaches are you high on this year? Anyone that you say, Hey, that's good value there at that payout. Well, I think Frank Wright's really good value. I really do. Because I think, you know, let's the one thing about these awards, and this is why they put limits on these awards, is because the, there is certain criteria that the coach must meet, right? It's got to be a team that wasn't, you know, maybe a little bit under the radar last year, didn't play well, that overperformed. Kevin Stefanski, you know, takes over the Browns, leads them to the playoffs, you know, closes the season out, you know, gets to play a playoff wild card game. Perfect scenario. So I think it'll be someone like that. So let's go. You know, Frank Wright, 
take, got Carson Wentz, if he turns him around, that's an indication. I think Mike Zimmer is another one. Mike Zimmer, if they win the Central, if they win the North, excuse me, and the Vikings go and make a playoff run and they've improved off their team of last year, he's a strong consideration. What I think he's 25 to 1. You know, I don't think guys like Belichick and Reed get it because I think they always feel like the team's better. You know, the team's much improved. Fangio would be another guy at 25 to 1, you know, that I think he would have a great opportunity to improve. I mean, if Mike Tomlin takes this to Pittsburgh team, and they get to the playoffs with a bad cap situation that they've had, an aging quarterback, an offensive line that's not very good, you know, and coming off a season where they were really had staggering numbers in terms of takeaways and their ability to win close games, seven and two in close games. You know, you got to get, but I don't think Tomlin, if they're, if they're nine and, and eight, Tomlin's not going to win coach of the year because Frank Wright's probably going to be 12 and five. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why it's really easier to say, let's take $500 and let's sprinkle it around five coaches. And we're going to get our money back if we pick the right ones. It's a little bit like playing roulette, but you got a better chance. I think the odds are better for you in this game. And I love when we talked the other day, Michael, and you said, Bill Belichick, they'll never give it to him. No way. Uh, three. No. Yeah. Look, he's only the greatest coach of all time, you know, but everybody think, well, it was Brady. You know, it was Brady. Brady won all those. I mean, he's only got six of them up there. He's only got eight on his fingers. He's only been to numerous conference championship games, but he's not a good coach. You know, it's, it's yeah. somebody else because it, it would take too much to admit that he's too good of a coach. He's the greatest coach of all time. He's going to be – who's a better coach than him? Seriously, who could ever duplicate what this man has done in terms of the longevity of success in a cap era? Mm-hmm. You know, I love Coach Walsh, right? And, I, and I've learned more about football from Coach Walsh than, than I could have ever possibly imagined growing up as a little kid in this town. But Coach Walsh did it when they had a, we had a, we didn't have a cap. So when we wanted to pay Fred Dean or we wanted to pay another player, we just paid him. Right. This is in a cap era. Harder thing to do. It's harder to manage Mm -hmm. success. I mean, think about Jerry Jones is 2000 to 2021 and Belichick's vastly different. I mean, it's so but no one's going to give him any credit for, it, you know, because there's really only one coach in the last probably 35 years that could just almost come close to him. And that's Joe Gibbs, who was able to go to Super Bowls with different quarterbacks. Well, and you guys were dead on to this coach of the year award is very much so one of those. It's like a comeback team of the year award. Almost the last three of four winners were taken over new teams uh, in terms of Major League Baseball today. We do have a, a bunch of games going on after a few days of 14 or 15 games, only nine on the docket today. But one of the plays that I know you wanted to talk about Oakland A's at the Seattle Mariners, Josh. Yeah, so a couple, uh, you know, again, a smaller slate than usual today. And I think this is, you know, if you're grinding baseball, you you love these 15-game slates, a little bit lower today. But I think that also could create some contrarian value stormy, the word that you like to hear hey, because, love it. There's, <laughs> because there's few games to choose from. So here's the thing, Stormy, like when there's 15 games, the public will spread their action across the board. When there's fewer games, there's fewer games to choose from. So each one is going to be more heavily bet than others just from a standpoint of, hey, there aren't, there aren't as many games in town to get down on. So I think that could provide some value. So if you're sad there's not a lot of games, maybe take it with a grain of salt because it could provide more public bias to bet against today. But uh, Stormy, you're right. Michael, I'm looking at Oakland tonight. You know, they caught my eye. They moved, had a pretty good move here. They opened around minus 125. They've been steamed up to around minus 140 here. And a couple system matches, steam 15 cents or more coming off a win. These teams are 153 and 106, 60% so far this year. But the system that I really like with Oakland guys, is this rested versus tired situation. When you have a team like the Oakland A's who are a favorite and they're coming off a day off versus a Mariners team who played in Colorado yesterday, it really provides an advantage to that rested team because especially if you're a favorite, you're expected to win, but really that time off, it helps you get your position players, you know, a day off their feet to kind of regroup and relax, recharge their batteries, reset your bullpen, oftentimes gives your starting pitcher an extra day of rest. That system there, that rested favorite versus a team on a back-to-back, this year, it is 44 and 28, 61%. So that would be a match here on Oakland. Uh, Michael, I'm looking at the Oakland A's today. Uh, any plays that are catching your eye? Well, I think, you know, when you look at Austin Goomber of, for the, you know, Oakland, I mean, he has pitched 
uh, extremely well. And the Oakland bullpen, which to me is significant. I mean, they're the best bullpen ERA in the league, and they have a whip of 1.0 over the last 15 days. So I think they'll limit the damage that's what Seattle can possibly do offensively. And then, you know, the concern you have is Oakland's been off to a slow start in the second half. And Flexen's a really good pitcher. He's been great at home. You know, and he is able to really, I think he's going to quiet these cold bats of Oakland. I wish the understated eight, it went down to seven and a half. Mm -hmm. I think that's a little bit too low for me. But I, I do like your play there because I do think, you know, Seattle doesn't hit lefties particularly well. Yeah, I thought that was going to be a lower scoring game as well. I liked it at eight. But when you see it get bet down to seven and a half, all of a sudden you're like, ah, I don't know anymore. Uh, Michael, I do know you liked a money line play in that Cubs Cardinals game. Which way are you leaning? I'm going to take the Cardinals. I love Kim. I mean, Kim started out for being, you know, he was part of the Cardinals staff, but now he's by far the best pitcher on their staff. You know, and I, and I think with the way they're hitting the ball and the way Goldschmidt's really the last, what, 14 games, I think he's got a 400, 414 average. I'm going to go with the best pitcher, really, for the Cardinals against the Cubbies and feel like they'll win on the run line. I'm with you, Michael. And, hey, one more. And I, you guys know me. I don't like parlays. Parlays are a handout to the book. But what if you could parlay the Red Sox and Massachusetts passing in the house today? That, that's what I'd be looking at, even though I don't think they're going to offer that. But I'm looking at the Red Sox tonight, yeah. guys. They're playing the Yankees. They've had the Yankees number. Of they lost two are. or three in New York. But And, Michael, you know I got to do it. But uh, I'm lucky because it's not just my fandom. I got a lot of matches here on the Red Sox. They're 7-3 and three against the Yankees this year. They're, bringing, uh, they're pitching Tanner Houck. He's a young player. Uh, who's got some really good stuff going up against Jordan Montgomery. The Red Sox open around minus 120. They've been steamed up to around minus 136. Uh, I think you're banking on a couple of things. Red Sox at home have done well, 28-19. They're 20-14 and 14 against lefties. They've had New York's number up until that last series. A little bit of revenge here. Alex Verdugo, you guys remember a guy in the stands threw a ball at him, so maybe there's that added advantage of wanting to beat the Yankees today. But really, it's the Red Sox bats. Still no Aaron Judge for the Yankees here. Red Sox are at full strength. Also, Red Sox hitting 257 this year. You know, back in the day, 257 wasn't a very good average. Today's baseball, that's fifth best in Major League Baseball. Yankees only hitting 236. That's 19th. So I like this move to the Red Sox, minus 136. Uh, to me, de decent opportunity to back Boston at an okay number at home at Fenway. You like that, Michael? Yeah, I, mean, I do. I think what Josh said, I mean, the Yankees' bats are quiet. Their lineup is, is really very lean, and, and they don't hit the ball very well, especially without Judge in there. And, you know, the Red Sox have their number. And I think let's just believe what we see. And when another team has their number, believe it. I'm just confused on how the Yankees have somehow been winning games lately with that roster they've had. It's really caught me off guard. It really has it this really past year, Stormy. I mean, that was Brett Gardner batting sixth. I mean, Brett Gardner's <laughs> batting sixth, isn't he? I mean, he, he, you know, it's just remarkable. Hey, guys. The poor Phillies. The Phillies couldn't beat him, Stormy, with that terrible lineup. <laughs> it's, a, it's just, I don't even know what's happening these days. Baseball's crazy. Such a fickle game. Thank you, guys. Another great show. Uh, always fun when we have Josh Applebaum on the program. Make sure Thank you follow you, him at Josh Thanks, underscore guys. insights. And, uh, I'll be back next week, a bunch, so let's do this again sometime soon, guys. Can't wait. Thanks, Stormy. That's all on v wait, the Sports Stormy. Betting Network. That's all on v wait, the Sports Stormy. Betting Network. That's all on v wait, the Sports Stormy. Betting Network. That's all. Have you been to Express lately? People can't get enough of their clothes. They're like insta-confidence boosters. The jeans come in a temp control fabric that keeps you comfortable no matter the weather. And the t-shirts, hands down, they'll feel like they're made of the softest fabric you've ever worn. And get this, the suits have stretch and look sharp. Like, what? How do they do that? Everyone's raving about the newest looks from Express. Just check out the five-star reviews. See for yourself and shop the latest at Express.com and in stores. This is Miami's own DJ EFN co-host of the Drink Champs podcast on the Black Effect Podcast Network and iHeartRadio. Every week, Nori and I sit down with the most legendary artists, producers, and icons in the music industry and the culture at large. So if you like to hear some legendary stories, learn some hip-hop history, or just want to have a good laugh, make sure you go to subscribe to Drink Champs on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.